Welcome back everybody to Donnie Boy 73 the small engine doctor. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the carburetor kit in your steel FS38 grass trimmer. Now this video may also apply to other steel grass trimmers as they have the same carburetor and fuel line setup. What you want to start by doing is pushing in the clip here and remove the air filter cover. Next you'll need to remove the air filter itself. Now you're going to need to remove both 8mm nuts here. And I'm going to use a ratchet with an 8mm socket to do this. And once both nuts are removed, the cover is going to come off. Now you can pull on the carburetor a bit. The throttle cable holder here is going to come off. Now you want to remove the throttle cable from the lever down here, so just bring it up. And now the cable is going to slide right out. Now you can push down on the fuel line here. And do the same to the other fuel line down below. And now just simply pull on the carburetor. And now your whole carburetor is off. What I'm going to do at this point, because it's so dirty, is I'm going to clean it with some clean gas and a paintbrush. This will make sure that when I rebuild the carburetor, no dirt gets inside the carb when I put the parts back together. So I've got my carburetor cleaned, and I've also cleaned part of the trimmer here and the fuel line, and also my air filter bracket and cover. What I'm going to start by doing is removing this top cover here. There's four Phillips screws that need to be removed. Now the covers are going to come off. This part here separates so you can replace the primer bulb. I'm going to keep the same primer bulb so I'm just going to put it back on here. This is the metering diaphragm. It's not too too bad but it does need to be replaced just to make sure we don't get problems in the future. I'm also going to replace the needle and the lever here. So I'm just going to loosen this screw here until I can remove the whole assembly. So that'll be good there. Now this will come off. Make sure you do not lose that little spring underneath. I won't be replacing the Walsh plugs today. I only do this if the carburetor is very problematic. So in this case, I'm just going to leave them on the way they are. I'm going to remove this jet here to make sure that it's clean inside. Just be careful taking out this little jet because it can easily strip on the top here. So basically what you want to do is make sure that the small hole in the center of the jet is not plugged. And I can see right through it there, so it's pretty good. What I have here is a wire from a wire brush and it's small enough to fit through this little hole and when you do this you're absolutely sure that it's not plugged. And now before I lose the small jet I'm going to put it back in the carburetor. Do not tighten it too much because you can easily strip the threads. Now I flip the carburetor over. I'm going to take off this screw here. And this is the pump diaphragm. I'm going to be replacing that as well. So remove it. And also remove the gasket beneath it. Make sure that everything's clean in there. If it's dirty like this, just clean it with carburetor cleaner or with a rag. Always use fresh clean rags when you're working on a carburetor. Now here I'm going to remove the small screen. Just grab a nice pick like this. Go in. Then bring it up. Sometimes these little screens look clean, but they're actually varnishized with gas, and what happens is the fuel cannot flow through it. Therefore, it's always good when you do a carburetor rebuild to replace it. And examine your carburetor down in here to make sure that it's all clean. This hole here actually leads to the hole where the needle goes, and I can see right through it, so I know for sure that it's clean. And examine the rest of the carburetor parts to make sure that they are clean as well. Now that you've got the carburetor all apart and cleaned, it's time to install the new carburetor kit in it. Now for this carburetor you can buy two kits, a complete rebuild kit or just a partial repair kit. This kit is number RB100 from Zama. It's the complete repair kit, that's why it's got all the hardware in there, including the spring and the Welsh plugs and the pin. The other kit is GND-56 from Zama as well. All it has are the diaphragms and no hardware. This kit is much cheaper, it's about half the price. Sometimes that's all you need to do is buy this kit here when you do a rebuild. But if there's a lot of wear and tear on your machine, you're best to get the complete repair kit with all the hardware. 
here are the parts from the kit. I'm going to start with the small screen. I'm just going to insert it here like this. I'm going to grab a quarter inch drill bit and gently put it right in the center of the screen and push down right to the bottom. Make sure that the screen has gone in nice and straight. You want to make sure that the screen is not rippled or off the edges. Now I'm going to install the gasket on this part and now this diaphragm is going to go over the gasket on this part. Now grab this part, insert it over top of the carburetor, make sure that this screw here is on the side of the lever. Insert it on the carburetor like this. You may have to move the lever up. This cover will only go on one way. When you feel that it's locked in like that, that's good. Put the screw back on. And this will be tight enough. Now flip the carb over. Now grab the new spring from the kit, insert it in the carburetor like this. Next you'll need the lever and the pin. Insert it in like that. Now insert the new needle in the lever like this. Now grab your carburetor, make sure the spring's still there. And you want to put everything down in one motion. Make sure that the spring goes underneath the embossed part of the lever here that you see between my fingers. Now push the pin under the screw. Make sure you hold it so it doesn't pop out on you. And now tighten up the small Phillips screw. Now another way to install this lever in the pin, just so you know, is you can put the needle inside the hole, leave the spring, go down with the lever and the pin. Make sure the spring goes underneath the embossed part. Then just grab the needle like this. And push down. This may be an easier way for some of you guys watching. And of course make sure that the screw is tight, but not too tight because you can easily strip the threads. A good setting for this lever is if it's flush with the body of the carburetor like this as you see. Usually out of the package they'll be set good, but if you notice that it's way off, then adjust it. It's best if you adjust this without putting any pressure on the needle. So what you would do is if you wanted to bring the lever up, you would hold it, go with the screwdriver, bring it up, and if you wanted to bring the lever down, you would hold it back here and push it down. The higher the lever is, the more fuel is going to get to the engine. The lower that the lever is right here, the less fuel will get to the engine. Now you want to grab the gasket, stick it over the carb like this. Make sure that the holes line up here. Now install the metering diaphragm and also make sure that the holes match up with it as well. It only goes on one way with all the holes matched up like this. If you install it the other way, it's not going to run. Now grab the other parts of the carburetor and install them in this position. Now install all the screws. Just snug all the screws for now. Just so that the plates go on evenly. So just kind of crisscross like this. The reason for tightening the covers on evenly is to prevent a fuel or air leak. If you have an air leak or fuel leak, your machine's not going to run properly. Now that I've got the carburetor back together, I'm going to show you how to reinstall it on your trimmer. Before you install the carburetor, make sure that this part here is in the back here. This little pin is going to go in into this hole over here. Now grab your carburetor, hold it in this position here, line it up with the studs and insert it in there. Insert the shorter hose in the bottom connector, push it in as far as you can and insert the other hose in the connector up above. The next thing I'm going to do is install the throttle cable. Now you want to make sure that the side with the bigger hole here on this connector is turned toward the bottom of the trimmer because that's where your throttle cable is going to attach to. So I'm going to leave it down like that. Now I'm going to lift up the throttle lever like this and insert the cable through the groove here. Once it's in like that, let the lever go back. and now the cable's on properly. You can always try it like this and if you see it moving up and down like that you know it's on properly. Now I'm going to install this small gasket here. Now I'm going to install the air filter bracket. Make sure it's in this position here. Now install the two 8 millimeter nuts. And now tighten up the two nuts evenly so that the carburetor is nice and straight on the motor. 
Now I'll reinstall the air filter. I've ordered a new filter for this machine because this one's pretty dirty. I'm just going to use it for today the way it is and then install the new one when I get it. And I'll reinstall the air filter cover. You want to insert this part here of the cover inside here. And then just clip it in. Now that I'm done rebuilding the carburetor and it's reinstalled on the trimmer, I'm just going to try it out to make sure it's working good. So as you can see it's not hard to rebuild a carburetor and your steel grass trimmer and make it run good again. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in my next video.